Namaste, good evening, and a very warm welcome to everyone. On the occasion of the 7th International Day of Yoga, the National Gallery of Modern Art, Ministry of Culture, Government of India is going to organize a session on yoga for immunity and respiratory health in collaboration with Isha Foundation. I would like to welcome our Director General, Directors, Chairperson and members of the Advisory Committee of all three branches of NGMA, Delhi, Mumbai and Bangalore, present all distinguished guests, artists, colleagues and friends of NGMA. International Yoga Day will be observed on 21st of June across the globe. The theme for International Yoga Day 2021 is Yoga for Wellbeing. Yo yoga assumed the most significant position and also emerged as an important tool to provide us inner balance and a strength to survive these di difficult times. This yoga session is being offered by volunteers of ISA Foundation to support us physically, mentally, and physically during these challenging times. Now I would like to invite Nina Nana Swapnaganda Aka to conduct this session ahead. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to this yoga session offered to you to support you in these challenging times. My name is Nina and I'm a part-time volunteer for Isha Foundation. I'm also a graphic designer by profession and I run my own graphic design studio called The Drawing Board. Today, I'm here to offer you a simple set of practices designed by Sadhguru to help us through these challenging times. Before we start the session, let's take care of a few things so that you can experience this session in the best possible way. Dedicate the next 30 minutes exclusively for this session. It would be best if you're using your laptops along with your earphones for this session. If you're using your mobile phones, please see that you keep it on do not disturb mode. Ensure that you are in a quiet and private place. Also ensure that there are no interruptions while the session is going on, like getting up in between, going to the washroom, checking your text messages, answering your phone calls, etc., etc. Let's take a few moments to set the right ambience for ourselves. Okay. Now, let's first introduce ourselves to Sadhguru. Who is Sadhguru? Let's watch this video. You're going to meet a man who has a devoted following around the world and you'll find him astonishingly pragmatic on a range of very modern day problems. Let's meet Sadhguru. In your life, if you think the work that you're doing is important, first thing is you must work upon yourself. This is a curious thing because what is the true definition of yoga? How to overcome this fear? So what do we mothers do for our children? This moment, how joyful are you feeling within yourself, determines the quality of your life, isn't it so? My grandfather gave me an article written by you. Yeah, I'm not that old as your grandfather. <laughs> In reality, there's just you, me and someone else. If all of us change, the world has changed. If we refuse to change, we will be only talking about it. Today, modern science has recognized that water has memory. Seventy percent of the ailments that human beings are suffering are self-created. The experience of life, whatever happens to us, you can either become wise or you can become wounded. It's a choice we have. If God doesn't necessarily exist, why do we need gurus? Why do we need Sadhguru? When you are in an unfamiliar terrain, it is sensible to take instructions. We certainly are in an unfamiliar terrain, aren't we? In today's session, we'll be learning two yogic practices 
designed by Sadhguru for activating and strengthening your spine and enhancing your immunity. Sadhguru offers these tools not just as a mere physical exercise, but as means to open up a higher possibility in our system. Before going into practices, let's hear from Sadhguru the yogic perspective on the significance of the spine within the human system. A natural upsurge of energy will happen. It activates the lumbar region of the spine in a tremendous way, strengthens the muscles along the spine. The sharpness of your intellect, you will see, you can see a difference happen just because you're doing a simple few things. Ultimately, whatever, whatever you wish to do in your life, how much clarity do you have is all there is, isn't it? About anything? Yes or no? If you don't have clarity, you will try to make it up with confidence. <laughs> confidence is a very poor substitute for clarity. It's like uh, there's a busy highway, Vehicles are moving at a fast pace. Your vision is not clear. You bring confidence. You can... Uh, you can refer to your horoscope. You know you have a horoscope. You can refer to your horoscope and say, my horoscope says I live for ninety years, nothing is going to happen to me and just cross you may make it. Or uh, use one of your slogans which will bring you confidence. You can say Jai Sri Ram, you can say Allah Akbar, Hail Mary, whatever you want, whatever works for you. Loudly shout the slogan and run across. It may work. Just by sheer chance or because of the compassion of some driver, but every day if you try it, we know where to pick you up. One day you can make it with confidence. So confidence is not a substitute for clarity. If you want to do anything successfully, you must have clarity, isn't it? If clarity has to come, the most important thing is your spine should be in a certain condition because your perception is largely handled there. See, spine is not just a physical substance, it is a communication network, a serious communication network. If you lose it or if it becomes insensitive, you don't know what you're losing. You're just losing something phenomenal. So it's not just a physical substance, it is the basis of communication that's happening in the system, isn't it? The spinal cord is… N I mean the spine is not just one single piece, it's many complex assembly. Every day it needs to stretch. If it telescopes into one into another, then the communication capability in the spine is hugely lost. So. This yoga namaskar. It activates the lumbar region of the spine in a tremendous way, strengthens the muscles along the spine, giving it a reinforcement so that as one ages, the collapsing of the spine, which causes pinching of the nerves, does not happen. And if already there's damage is setting in, the best way to regenerate your spine would be by doing yoga namaskar. It has all-round benefits for the entire body. Yoga namaskar is a very simple and complete process by itself. A natural upsurge of energy will happen if you just keep your feet together and sit down in a squat. So the squat 
is best if you can put your feet together and squat, which most of you cannot do right now, very few people can do. Uh, we don't want too much energy to happen, so the next best stance is to keep your feet in line with your shoulders, just the same width as your shoulders. You can do up to twenty-one. Twenty-one is a good number to do. If you cannot do that, start with seven. Slowly, every two days, one extra if you do. In about forty days, you will be at twenty-one, which is a good number to do. You will see it will make a phenomenal difference in the way you function. If there is some way to gauge your intelligence, the sharpness of your intellect, you will see, you can see a difference happening. Just because you're doing a simple few things to relax and activate the spine. Now we will begin with the practices. Before we start, it would be best if those of you watching on your phone can keep it in front of you on the desk or next to you. There will be a demonstration of the practice. Please do not attempt the practice during the demonstration. There will be instructions for you to do the practice after the demo is complete. Those of you who are wearing spectacles, please remove them when you're doing the practices. You can keep it on while the demonstration is on, okay? Now, the first practice that we will learn is Yoga Namaskar. It's a simple and powerful system, in, and powerful system which activates the lumbar region of the spine and strengthens your muscles along the spine, preventing the spine's collapse due to aging. Yoga Namaskar also has many all-round benefits for the entire body. Let's go through the video. Yoga for well-being. Yoga Namaskar. Yoga Namaskar is a powerful system by itself. It activates the lumbar region of the spine in a tremendous way, strengthens the muscles along the spine, giving it a reinforcement so that as one ages, the collapsing of the spine which causes pinching of the nerves does not happen. And if already there's damage is setting in, the best way to regenerate your spine would be by doing Yoga Namaskar. It has all-round benefits for the entire body, Yoga Namaskar is a very simple and complete process by itself. To practice Yoga Namaskar, you will need a light stomach condition. That is approximately one and a half hours gap after having a meal. If you do not fulfill this condition, please skip this particular practice for now. Those with hernia and pregnant women in the third and fourth month of pregnancy should avoid practicing Yoga Namaskar. From the fifth month onward, pregnant women can continue practicing as long as they are comfortable. Now we will learn Yoga Namaskar. This is a series of seven steps. You will demonstrate one full cycle. Please observe. Stand with your feet comfortably apart and parallel to each other. Keep your arms and shoulders loose and relaxed. Eyes open. Focus on a point in front of you. Once your focus is steady, hold Namaskar by bringing your palms together in front of your chest. This is the starting position. As you inhale, bring your hands up above your head. As you exhale, bring your hands downward so that the heels of your palms Come behind your neck. As you inhale, bring your hands straight up. 
As you exhale, bring your hands down in front of your chest. This is step one. You do the same thing twice more. Step two. As you exhale, make a sound from the pit of the throat. Step 3. The whole time, your fingers should be together, pointing straight up, even when you bring your hands behind your neck. As you bring your hands up, it is a full inhalation. As you lower it down, it is a full exhalation with the sound. After you do this three times, you squat straight down. Step 4. As you inhale, Bring your hands up. As you exhale, bring it down behind the neck. As you inhale, bring it up. As you exhale, bring it down in front of your chest. Then, as you inhale, push your hands straight out in front of you, fingers pointing forward. As you exhale, making the sound, bring it back to the chest. Do this three times. Step five. As you inhale, bring your hands up. As you exhale, bring them down behind the neck. As you inhale, bring your hands up. As you exhale, down in front of your chest. As you inhale, straight out in front of you. As you exhale, back to the chest. Once more, step six, inhale, hands up. Exhale, down. Inhale, up. Exhale, down. Inhale, hands straight out. Exhale, hands to the chest. Now step 7. As you inhale, push your hands straight out. Bring your knees to the ground. Lean forward and place your forehead on the ground. Stretch your arms above your head. Rest your palms on the ground. Place your hands together so that the thumbs and pointing fingers are touching, forming a triangle. Your elbows should be slightly bent. This is Balasana. Stay here until your breath stabilizes or for a minimum of 2 minutes. Then gently stand up and come back to the starting position. This is one cycle of Yoga Namaskar. Now we will do one cycle of Yoga Namaskar together. Please stand. Stand with your feet comfortably apart and parallel to each other. Eyes open. Focus on a point in front of you. Once your focus is steady, hold Namaskar in front of your chest. This is the starting position. Step 1. As you inhale, bring your hands up. As you exhale, with the sound, bring your hands down behind your head. As you inhale, bring them up. As you exhale, bring them down to your chest. Do this twice more. Step 2. Bring your hands up with a full inhalation. Bring your hands down with a full exhalation. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down to the chest. Step 3. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down behind the head. 
Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down to the chest. Now squat straight down. Ensure your focus is directly in front of you. Step four, inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down. Then as you inhale, push your hands straight out. As you exhale, bring your hands towards your chest. We'll do this twice more. Step five, inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down. Keep your head straight. Inhale, up. Exhale, down. Inhale, straight out. Exhale, back. Step six. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down to the chest. Inhale, straight out. Exhale, back. Step seven. As you inhale, push your hands straight out. Bring your knees to the ground. Lean forward and place your forehead on the ground. Stretch your toes behind you. The body should be sitting upon your heels. Place the hands together on the ground so that the thumbs and pointing fingers are touching, forming a triangle. Your elbows should be slightly bent. Stay here in Balasana until your breath stabilizes. Then gently stand up and come back to the starting position. When you are finished, you can sit comfortably. We will look at a few modifications and corrections. If you find it difficult to squat, then you can place a support about half an inch or one inch thick below your heels and squat down, ensuring your feet are parallel to each other. For some people, while bringing the hands behind the head, the fingers are pointing backward. The fingers should be pointing straight up. Also, there is a tendency for the head to come down. The head should be straight. Do not move the hands too quickly or casually. There should be slight tension in the arms as you do the movement. Now we will do one cycle of Yoga Namaskar together, incorporating all of these corrections. Please stand. Stand with your feet comfortably apart and parallel to each other. Those of you who need a cushion as support to squat, you can keep it just behind your feet. And when we come to step four to squat down, you can step backward onto the cushion and use it as a support when you squat down. Eyes open. Focus on a point in front of you. Once your focus is steady, hold Namaskar in front of your chest. This is the starting position. Step 1. As you inhale, bring your hands up. As you exhale, with the sound, bring your hands down behind your head. As you inhale, bring them up. As you exhale, bring them down to your chest. Do this twice more. Step two, bring your hands up with a full inhalation. Bring your hands down with a full exhalation. 
Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down to the chest. Step three, inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down behind the head. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down to the chest. Now squat straight down. If you need a cushion, you can use it as a support. Ensure your focus is directly in front of you. Step 4. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down. Then as you inhale, push your hands straight out. As you exhale, bring your hands towards your chest. We'll do this twice more. Step five, inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down. Keep your head straight. Inhale, up. Exhale, down. Inhale, straight out. Exhale, back. Step six, inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down to the chest. Inhale, straight out. Exhale, back. Step seven, as you inhale, push your hands straight out. Bring your knees to the ground. Lean forward and place your forehead on the ground. Stretch your toes behind you. The body should be sitting upon your heels. Place the hands together on the ground so that the thumbs and pointing fingers are touching, forming a triangle. Your elbows should be slightly bent. Stay here in Balasana until your breath stabilizes. Then gently stand up and come back to the starting position. When you are finished, you can sit comfortably. When you practice yoga namaskar on your own, on a regular basis, for maximum impact, you should do three cycles of yoga namaskar. Please incorporate these practices in your daily routine. It will help you strengthen your spine. Now, Sadhguru will guide us to a process called Silma Kriya. It will help you increase your immunity. Simha Kriya. Ancient yogic techniques are known to have many benefits for the body, mind and energies. Sadhguru offers Simha Kriya, a simple but powerful yogic practice to boost the immunity and enhance our lung capacity. Sadhguru will be giving the instructions. It is important that you receive these instructions properly. Please dedicate the next 10 minutes exclusively for this process. Please do not attempt the practice while watching the video. First, listen to the complete instructions and then attempt the practice on your own. So this is a simple practice for those of you who do not know any other powerful process. One thing is, it will enhance your lung capacity. Another thing is, it will enhance your immunity and above all, if you can do it today, if you can do it for next five days and suddenly one day you're not able to do it, this means definitely you got 
some respiratory problem, it doesn't matter what it is, you must have yourself checked if you suddenly find you're not able to do it. What it involves is that you have to fully stretch your tongue out with your mouth fully open and then breathe as powerfully as possible without jerking the abdomen, but powerful pushing in and pushing out both inhalation, exhalation twenty-one times. And when it is done, you roll up your tongue upward, push it as further back as you can. You don't have to use your hands, it's not a good time to use your hands. <laughs> so roll up your tongue fully as much as you can by itself like... And still with your mouth open, again breathe the same way. Inhalation, exhalation as powerfully as possible, but you must get the sound by making a constriction in your throat like this. The sound must be there, it's important that you make form a constriction at the throat, at the pit of your throat at a certain age or your breathing is not that good, at least thirty seconds. If you're not able to do one minute, a minimum of thirty seconds you stay there. When the day you're not able to do it, you must understand that there is some problem with your respiratory system and you must go for a checkup. Right now, I want you to just observe, don't do it, just observe and uh, I will tell you how to go about the process. So what's being done is uh, one has to sit in a cross-leg posture, whichever way you can, whatever your body permits, and then use both the arms to push it up in such a way that your rib cage lifts off the diaphragm region, fully pushed up, and now extend your tongue fully out. like this twenty-one times. When it's done, then close your mouth, that also twenty-one times, then close your mouth.
You exhale with your mouth closed, making the sound at the pit of your throat by creating a constriction. And then if you wish to sit quietly for some time with your eyes closed, do that, and then you can do whatever you're doing. This is a simple practice that anybody could do. You ensure your stomach is not too full, you must be somewhat hungry. Even if you are not totally empty stomach, at least you must be somewhat hungry kind of situation. So, uh, this is a simple practice, particularly those of you who are exposed either because you are medical personnel or you're police or you're in some other service where you're exposed to infected people. Please make sure you do this, this will make a lot of difference for you. Conditions for the practice. You should be somewhat hungry. Ideally, give at least two and a half hours space between your last meal and the practice. Anyone between the age of six to seventy years can do the practice, regardless of their physiological and medical conditions. Those below six years of age and those above seventy years of age can also do the practice, but they must do the breathing twelve times only, not twenty-one times. People with a brain hemorrhage or a brain tumour can do the practice, but they must do the breathing twelve times only, not twenty-one times. You can practice Simha Kriya up to three times daily, ensuring you leave a minimum of four hours gap between two consecutive practices. Please do the practice exactly as instructed. Do not make any changes or modifications to it, such as increasing the count. Now we will do Simakriya together with Sadhguru's guidance. Those of who, who are wearing spectacles, please keep them aside. Ensure that your eyes, is, eyes are closed while you're doing the practices. Sit in a cross-leg posture. Place your palms facing downward upon your thighs, close to the knees. Use both your arms to push your body upward in such a way that your rib cage lifts off the diaphragm region. Close your eyes. Open your mouth wide and extend your tongue out fully. Breathe in and out powerfully, moving the abdomen muscles but without jerking the abdomen, with full inhalations and exhalations, making the sound from the pit of your throat. <laughs> Do this twenty-one times. If you happen to be over seventy years of age, do it a maximum of twelve times only. Roll your tongue upwards, push it as far back as you can towards the uvula. With an open mouth, breathe the same way, inhalation and exhalation, as powerfully as possible, making the sound from the pit of your throat. Do this twenty-one times. If you happen to be over seventy years of age, do it a maximum of twelve times only. Close your mouth, inhale fully and hold your breath. Simply sit there, holding your breath with the fullness of breath for one minute or a minimum of thirty seconds.
hold your breath as long as it's comfortable for you. When you feel like exhalation, exhale through the nostrils with your mouth closed, making the sound at the pit of your throat. You can sit there quietly for some time and open your eyes when you feel like it. There's a fun fact about these yogic practices. The people who practice yoga, they are the only ones who will reap the benefits of yoga. Right? So I know these practices can be a little difficult, especially for people who are not expo exposed to any kind of yoga in their life or who are not used to sitting on the ground for a long time. It took me, uh, especially for, especially Yoga Namaskar, it, uh, uh, even when I first tried Yoga Namaskar, it took me about seven to eight days to get used to it. And I couldn't uh, do the practice, couldn't bend or could, couldn't bend, uh, put my arms or legs or squat in the, in the, in the, in the way it was prescribed. But the important thing is that you don't give up. You know, our body with practice can adapt to almost anything. The important thing is that you do those practices every day. Now, these practices are available on Sadhguru app as well as on YouTube. You can do the practices watching these videos initially but it would be best if you could do the practices on your own sometime later. Apart from doing these practices, you can increase your immunity by consuming neem, haldi, kashayam, etc. I'm sure you know all these things. I will also be posting a link right now in the chat box on tips on how to increase your immunity. Also, in that link, there will be frequently asked questions, which will answer your questions on these practices. Now, let me share you my experience with Yoga Namaskar and Sima Kriya. Like I said, I'm a graphic designer, and at times I have to sit for 8 to 12 hours at a stretch and my back really goes for a toss. But Sima Kriya, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Yoga Namaskar, it really opens up my back like anything. No, nope. One time in the morning and one time in the evening, and my back is as good as new, mind you. I sit on a wooden chair also. <laughs> it's not, <laughs> it's one of my, I know, it's my favorite chair. <laughs> uh, about Sima Kriya, what can I say? I was uh, infected with COVID in the first wave last July. And uh, Sadhguru had just introduced Sema Kriya back then. And because I was doing other practices, I was not really doing Sema Kriya as instructed. But when I got COVID and when I was infected, uh, I was hospitalized, there was no other form of yoga that I could do. So on my bed, I used to do Sema Kriya. Uh, my oxygen levels uh, were up in like, you know, dwindling between 89, 90, 91, something like that. Uh, but when I started my Sima Kriya, I could see that uh, 
every time I did my Simha Kriya, my, my breath holding capacity increased by a few seconds. You know, like when I was, I, I, I could hold my breath for a few seconds longer every time I did my Simha Kriya, for 10 seconds, 12 seconds, 14 seconds, 20 seconds, like this. In seven or eight days, I was, I was able to hold my breath for more than 45 seconds. And actually, they let me go home uh, in seven days. And when I came back after a quarantine period of 14 days, they really couldn't believe the, the way I recovered. They could, the doctor couldn't tell if I was a COVID patient or not. No. So I hope you make these practices as a daily routine and reap the benefits. Now, we would like, really like to hear from you about how you like this session. I'll be posting a link for the feedback form. Okay, please fill the form. It will also let you in on a few more programs that Isha has to offer. If you like this program, I'm sure you do. And you want to have this program, the same program conducted for your family and friends. I'll be posting a link for, se for the se session request form right now. You can fill the form so that we can get in touch with you for the session. It's been really wonderful having you all in these numbers for this session. I hope to see you again in some session again. Namaskaram. Thank you, Ninandana and Swapnaganda Aka, Gauri Aka, for your kind support in conducting this session. For us, in such a short notice. मैं हमारे महानिदेशक राष्ट्रीय आधुनिक कला संग्रहालय को आभार प्रकट करने के लिए आमंत्रित करती हूँ धन्यवाद अरे वाह ओह मैं बीच बीच में सुन रहा था और इतना अच्छे प्रॉपरली जो इनर रियलिटी का बात करना इनर इंजीनियरिंग और इतना अच्छी तरह से शर्मा जी उसको समझाए और इतना बढ़िया प्रोग्राम और कितना एक्चुअली पावरफुल है इसमें आपको पता चल रहा है कि किस तरीका आप साइंस एंड योगा दोनों को मिला सकते और परफेक्ट उसको एक तंत्र जैसा होता है ना द साइंस ऑफ बॉडी उसी हिसाब से इतने अच्छी तरह से उसको प्रेजेंट किया और मैं एक्चुअली यहाँ पर हिमाचल में हूँ अभी जहाँ देख रहे ना रोरी का आर्ट गैलरी तो वहां पर एक्चुअली जो योगा का बात करते हैं ना द सुप्रीम पावर द मेन सोर्स कनेक्ट टू द मेन सोर्स तो जगह है देवभूमि जिसको बोलते हैं तो वहां पर मैं हूँ और ये बात एक्चुअली मैं अभी पैदल में चल के आ रहा था एक मंदिर का पास आप भी देख सकते तो इतना अच्छा है कि एक जो प्योरिटी का बात करते हैं ना उसको आप वहाँ फील कर सकते वो योगा जो बात अभी हम सुन रहे थे उसको मैं यहाँ फील कर रहा हूँ और इसलिए आप लोग को बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद स्पेशल बहुत अच्छा प्रोग्राम है और आप लोग को बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद और कल इंटरनेशनल योगा डे है आज से हम लोग प्यार हो गए उसको प्रॉपरली यूज करने के लिए तो आप, आप जो कार्यक्रम किए उसके लिए एनजीएम तरफ से बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद अपने पूरा टाइम देके उसको रिसर्च डेवलपमेंट करके स्पेशल सुजाता जी भी जैसे बता रहे थे उससे बहुत आगे मैंने देखा है जो प्रोग्राम आप कर रहे थे बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद करके मैं सबको नमस्ते करता हूँ धन्यवाद